when the patch isn't good enough. I feel guilty now for being gone so much. I know I had issues with it off and on over the years while calling home, getting into fights on the phone just because I wasn't there to share in the joy of an event, and my demon that liked to be lonely would always fight back. For 13 years, I worked jobs that took me out of town. The first local driving job I'd had since 2009 was driving graveyard runs, four hours each way to Moab, Utah and back, delivering to auto parts chain stores. This was in about 2016-ish. Within the first year of having my Class A CDL, 2006, I started driving over the road, driving 80,000-pound wrecking balls at 70 miles an hour plus, barreling down the open road, not having to report to anyone until I delivered or picked up a load. I had my space in the back of my truck, a bed, a TV, and a DVD player. Eventually, I got a small fridge and a microwave in my rig. It really helped save money for a while until I got a job with a company doing exploratory drilling. I really started making money with my CDL when I started drilling. I was only making $14 an hour at first, but by the time I finally left five years later, I was up to almost $25 an hour. We would work 88 hours a week for almost three days, three straight weeks, 20 days on, 10 days off. Those 10 days did not count against travel to and from the job. Sometimes I would get assigned to a job close to home, like in Urington, Nevada. It was an eight hour drive from home. Sometimes it would be in a little town called Tamarack, Minnesota. Other times, mostly between March and November, I would get flown to Alaska. One time I was assigned to a rig just outside of Battle Mountain, Nevada. There was only four and a half hours away so Athena would bring the boys on the weekend to visit. I was only at one location until the job finished. It could be a month, it could be up to a year or more, but when she could come out with the kids, she did more than once. She's my angel. At the time I started drilling, we were renting a two-bedroom, two-story condo from Athena's parents. Like I said, they saved our butts more than once. We were about a dozen doors away from the in-laws, and this is where I really started to dislike living near family. Not because they had done anything to make me feel this way, but I liked privacy, and that was too close for my comfort. I didn't mind being gone with work while we lived there. It's selfish, I know, but have you been paying attention? I was kind of really selfish my whole life. I think it was more of a survival tactic, but still, they were family. I was in the process of trying to mend a relationship with my mom so my kids could know both of their sets of biological grandparents. They knew my dad's second wife as grandma until they divorced, so I wanted my kids to at least know both of my parents. I was chatting and uh, text and video with my mom for a few weeks. The boys would jump in and talk during video sessions and thought it was fun to talk to the lady on the screen about their day. I realized they had no idea who she truly was. I mean. They saw people on screens all the time when they watched the tell live vision, so how is this any different to their young developing minds? I asked mom, since I was making such good money, if I were to pay for her trip if she wanted to come visit her grandsons. She'd met Cohen, my oldest, once, when he was about a month and a half old. Elsie and I had just gotten him out of the hospital a couple weeks earlier. Mom said she came up just to visit us, but I found out later she was actually only in town to see my dad for back child support and custody for my little brother, obviously because dad was attracted to little boys. Anyways, she declined, not just a no, but quote, well, why can't we just have a digital relationship? This has been fun, end quote. What the? I was speechless. I said I needed time to think and disconnected the chat. When I told my toddler boys, because I promised them before they could talk that I would never lie to them, that grandma didn't want to come visit, only have a digital relationship, it broke them. But I thought grandmas were supposed to come give you hugs and kisses, my youngest said to me, through eyes welding with tears. I broke. Message received. Wall built. I called her the next day over video chat and told her what my son had said. I told her that because she only wanted a digital relationship, that she may as well not have one at all. I asked her to stop contacting me and my little family. She tried sending birthday and Xmas gifts, and I just put RTS, or return to sender, in big, bold, permanent marker on every side and sent it back. It took about two years and a move, but she got the hint. Bort Longyear paid us pretty well to be out of town drilling. We got a daily per diem rate, and I learned to live cheaper quickly. 
I would stock up some groceries to avoid eating out of the gas stations and try to find a weekly hotel rate to split with my cross shift or an apartment to split with the whole crew. I would usually drink the excess away or blow it at the casino, depending on where the job was working. We got lucky at the Battle Mountain project I worked at and found an apartment. It was a small hole in the wall above the busiest bar in town. I was grateful to be working the graveyard shift on this job because the bar was quiet during the day. I mentioned earlier Athena would come visit with our son, at least when it was possible to drive there. I said earlier this was the company I worked for when I was involved in a rollover accident in Alaska, so I was all over the country, but she tried her best to give me and my sons as much time as she could. She's my angel. While working here, we decided that it was time to buy a home. We were making enough that the banks approved us for way more than we even thought to apply for. We kept the budget within a range and shopped for a house. I hated every minute of it, the home buying that is. I didn't like looking at houses on my days off when there was other stuff I wanted to do. I didn't like the commitment of a home purchase. I didn't like commitment, and this was a 30 plus year one at least. The fighting between Athena and I got bad. I ended up just giving in to whatever she wanted, just to end the arguing. Just did the classic smile and nod for the rest of the time we looked at homes. That's how I was trained follow orders. We bought her dream home. Five bedrooms, three bath, 3,000 square feet, smashed on 0.17 acres, and looked just like the neighbor's house. Well, I can't say this was her dream home, but we thought it was what we wanted, because that's what the people around us were getting, keeping up with the American dream. If it wasn't quiet, it was loud. Every time I was home, we fought about everything for no reason. We were apart so much, we didn't know how to be together. My unresolved internal issues were rearing their ugly heads. I was putting up walls I didn't know I had every time I got home. I would block out real life with video games and alcohol. I would stay up late, ignore my family, and live life in my head. I made enough money to make it okay. Everyone had food, clothes, and a roof over their heads, right? That's what the world wants us all to think, for sure. Just sell yourself for my dollar and spend it where I want you to. In fact, I'll give you so much credit you can drown yourself in debt and starve when the economy tanks again. And that's what happened. I spent it. Everything. I spent over $3,000 on Xmas that year. I can only think now to try to make up for the fact that I missed 85% of my children's lives. Maybe. I don't know. I don't trust therapists. I did so many things rightly wrong. Did my boys ever go hungry? No. Naked? No. Homeless? No. Did they ever really have a dad? No. Did I? I mean, I know I have a dude that I called dad, but was he a parent when he needed to be? A am I? I was a mess. My life became one. When your seven-year-old says that you and mom need a divorce because you fight too much, and you don't fight when you aren't together, it really slaps you, especially since this was coming from the same wise little man whom four years earlier had opened my eyes to my relationship with my own mother. We got divorced. It was the most peaceful divorce in divorce history, I'm pretty sure. I mean, this was the most, this was the woman that paid for my first divorce. She was with me and had been with me through the last seven years of hell my ex-wife Elsie put us through. We didn't want more of that. I gave her anything and everything she would need for her or my kid. There was nothing to argue over. I was not able to be a husband. She was an excellent mother. Just let her do it. I'll admit now, I stepped too far away. I fell off whatever wagon Athena had managed to keep me strapped to for the last eight years. I would party whenever I could. I usually only took my boys when it was my scheduled weekend. I dated whatever woman wanted to date me. I was gone all the time and would indulge myself when I was. My money faded fast. I was making over $3,000 a week after taxes and child support and had nothing to show for it. 